What's up guys, ViperFV here, and uh, today we're going to go ahead and set up a GPS on my long range 7 inch build that I built on the channel a few months ago. Um, I really love that quad, so I wanted to go ahead and add GPS to it. I figured um, if I wanted to start doing some longer range flights and taking risks, I definitely want to put a GPS on it. So I don't have to worry about crashing and never finding it again, especially with the GoPro and whatever else I might have on it. That could be expensive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to wire it up and then also show you guys how to set it up in beta flight to where either you can have it on fail safe. So if you have a fail safe, it'll go ahead and return to home. Now remember, it's not going to return to home and land and everything else. It does not land for you. You will have to manually take over control. It's going to go ahead and it's going to um, come within a certain amount of feet or meters of you and then you can go ahead and take control and then land it. Uh, so just keep that in mind that this is not an auto land. This is not like phantom phantom uh, quads or drones that's going to be able to self land and everything else. Um, just doesn't have that uh, ability. And now I'm also not going to be going into detail about all the little uh, things you can change in the Betaflight CLI. Um, I will leave a link down to the GPS, those coordinates and those that information uh, down below in the video description, as well as an affiliate link to some GPS units from um, some of my uh, affiliates. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And if you do uh, find this video helpful and uh, it does help you get in the air and use this function, I really would appreciate it if you use those links uh, because it does help out the channel tremendously. So let's go ahead and get over to the bench. So you guys had to wire it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to show you guys the setup on Betaflight, along with setting up your Tyrannus to where it can record logs of your flights. Just in case you do have a quad that goes down and you have no DVR, um, this will record your logs on your Tyrannus uh, of your GPS coordinates and other things. So you can go ahead and find your quad just in case it does get, um, you know, crashes somewhere and you don't know where it's at. So let's go ahead and we're going to do a flight after that as well, just showing you guys real briefly of what it was all about as well. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so we're on the bench here and we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to wire up the GPS unit. And then after we'll go ahead and get to the computer and show you how to configure Betaflight to be able to configure the return to home and everything else uh, with the GPS. So first things first, we have to make sure that we find a location for the GPS where it has a clear uh, sight to the sky. And in my scenario here, since I do have a 3D printer, I just 3D printed a little piece back here where I was able to include my VTX and also my Crossfire receiver as well, uh, Crossfire radio, uh, antenna on the back here. So I have clear access to the sky so we can go ahead and get all the satellites that I can get. Um, I've also seen a lot of people put on top of their GoPro mounts. Uh, so it has, you know, usually there's nothing on top of it. Um, I've even seen people put it on their battery straps or on their batteries, but I really wouldn't recommend putting on the battery just in case you have to do an injection or if the battery strap breaks, God forbid your GPS unit gets lost somewhere and you're not able to find your quad. So um, I would recommend either maybe putting on an arm, putting maybe on top of the, probably the arm is a worst case scenario, but probably on top of the, the GoPro camera or somewhere on top of your frame if you have access to a clear spot, um, and then also maybe 3D printing something off the back. Um, be creative with it, you know. But um, so let's go ahead and wire up the GPS unit here. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in so we can go ahead and show you guys what wires we're gonna be using. Zoomed in on the flight controller and also the wiring. So we have a red wire, we have a black wire, we have a white wire, and we also have a green wire on my unit. Now your colors might be different, but typically red is always positive, which it is, and this should go to your 3.3 volt pad. Then we have a black wire that goes to your ground. Then we have the white wire, which is a TX pad, a TX um, for a UART. And then this other one here that's green is the RX for a UART. Um, so the white wire is gonna go to a RX pad because you opposite. So TX goes to RX and then RX goes to TX. And then the green wire will go to a TX pad on an available UART. And in my case, since I'm using the Radix flight controller, I have one right here. And so I'm gonna be using these two pads, RX and TX six. And then I'm also gonna be using this 3.3 volt, 3 .3 volt pad there. And I'm also gonna go ahead and use this ground pad right here being used by the receiver. Um, you can probably use any ground pad. Um, 
if it does have, you do have a dedicated ground pad on your flight controller, go ahead and use that one. But since I don't have one on top that's available, I'm going to go ahead and just use that one. So let's go ahead and uh, solder this all up. There we go. Okay, and then we have our ground. I'll go ahead and share this one right here. And like I said, I'm, I'm using this receipt pad since that's the only ground I have on top of the board. All right. And then we have this one, the white wire, which is a TX. We're going to put that to the receive pin, which is this first one right here. Well, the second to the last on this rail. So that's all wired up, and so we're ready to go ahead and go to the computer and configure the GPS unit. Now we're on the computer, and we're going to go ahead and show you how to configure Betaflight to use um, the GPS and get GPS rescue mode. So first things first, um, we want to go ahead and do, now as you notice right here, I am on Betaflight 3.5.7. Um, since this is my Brain FPV Radix flight controller, they actually are behind on their releases. Um, they're actually up to 4.1, but it's not an official release yet. This video will cover is covers 4.1 as well. Everything is pretty much the same of setting it all up. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we got to go to the ports tab right here. And in my case, I used my GPS on UART 6. So you want to go ahead and go over to sensor input and click on GPS right there and just click save and reboot. And then once the flight controller is rebooted, you wanna go ahead and come over to the configuration page and you wanna come over here to GPS, click on GPS, and then you wanna go ahead and click on the brand. This is a U blocks, so we're gonna click on U blocks. And then this is all fine and this is all fine as well. Since this does not have a magnetometer, we don't have to worry about any of that. So what we're gonna do is click on save and reboot. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we want to assign a switch as well to the um, GPS so we can test it out or just in case we lose video, we can go ahead and activate it. So we're going to go, ahead and go to the modes tab and on this step, you do have to make sure that you do have a spare switch set up on my radio, which I already done. And I do have a video on that. If you are confused about how to set up switches on your radio, I'll go ahead and leave a link down below uh, to that video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the modes tab and we're going to scroll down here and we find GPS rescue. So beep, GPS satellite count. No, we want to go ahead and find GPS rescue. So let's go ahead and click on right there. I must have skipped it before. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to, I know this, so I'm going to slide it over here because I know it's going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on my switch. So it went right here make it even with everything else. Click save. So now when I activate the switch, this turns yellow. So now we have it on a switch. Now what we have to go ahead and do is we need to go over to our fail safe tab. And you'll see here the fail safe. So it has stage one fail safe switch action. Um, that we're gonna leave that because that would be assigning a switch to the fail safe. Um, we're pretty much doing exact thing, but we're going to be putting it into GPS rescue. So when the quad first initially, um, stage two failsafe, when it gets no, I think it's, I forget how long, um, it has to go without a signal to the flight controller, but it's a few amount of, you know, it's a set amount of time here. And what happens is it will go ahead and activate. And originally what it should do is drop and just drop out of the sky. Don't hold anything. Um, that is how everything should be. But if we're on a long range quad, we don't want it to drop out of the sky. We want it to return home since we have the GPS function. So we're gonna go ahead and click on GPS re rescue where it's gonna go ahead and it's going to come back to you. And um, then you can go ahead and take over the controls once it gets close enough to you, to your home position. So we're gonna go ahead and click on save and reboot. All right, so after we went ahead, the next step we're gonna do is we want to set up our OSD to have some GPS values. So 
I'm not going to actually put, um, so where I went ahead and selected, I went ahead and selected GPS satellites, GPS speed, just because I think it'd be fun to see my speed on there, even though it's not perfectly accurate, but it's pretty close. And I put my home direction and home distance. Um, GPS longitude and latitude, you can go ahead and add there as well. That's always helpful. Um, but we're also going to be showing you here in a little bit where we can go ahead and log it into our Tyrannus. So then once we have a down, if we have a down quad, we can go ahead and pull the log off our Tyrannus and we can even plot the flight path too as well through Google Maps and Google Earth, which is really handy, especially if you don't know exactly where your quad is, but you can tell what direction it was going in and then the last coordinate. So you should be really, really close to it uh, when you show up with it, uh, with your car or whatever to go locate it. Um, so go ahead and move this all around real quick for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm trying to separate all these things so I can sense of it all. All right, so that's my longitude. Longitude. That right there, because my rapid fire module will be like right up there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and this is my speed. This is my satellites. So you can see that it really does get get filled up pretty quick. That's my direction to home. Let's put that right there. I think that's good. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna move that over just a tight tad. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that is pretty much how I have my OSD set up. So I have my longitude, latitude to tell me where I'm at, um, even though my Tyrannus will be telling me the last known location, just in case it does, I do have a crash. I have my GPS um, satellites right here. And then we have our distance to home and our direction from home as well. So we'll definitely need these two. I would definitely suggest these two and maybe the satellites too, because it is nice to know how many satellites you have locked on. Um, so let's go ahead and save and exit this. And then we'll go ahead and show you guys how to um, add the um, information into your Tyrannus. So you can go ahead and log the last known longitude and latitude coordinates. All right, so we're on the radio and I'm using the X10S for this demonstration, but everything should be pretty much the same on any radio you're using if it's a Tyrannus. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the um, first, we're gonna go into the telemetry page and we need to make sure our quad is on where the gps unit is on as well so we can go ahead and discover new sensors so i'm going to go ahead and click on that right now and then you're going to go ahead and see all the different types of telemetry we have the gps gps speed altitude satellites all that stuff so that's all looking great so we can go ahead and click on stop discovery now uh what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go over to the special functions page, which is a few pages over. And I actually already have the switch set up um, just because I had to set it up just for this video. But I have right here, I have SE and the down is where my, that's my switch. So you just click on your switch and it'll automatically find it. And then for the options right here, you want to click on SD logs and then for this, I have it set to two seconds. Pretty much this is the logging of how quickly it's going to log your all your telemetry data uh, in, the, in the SD card. So I have it for every two seconds just to save on space. And uh, you can put one second too, just in case you are going really fast. But that's pretty much how you set it up. And then if you do have a bad crash where your battery gets ejected, you can go ahead and find your quad. So let's go ahead and get to the field. And we can go ahead and start with showing you guys how the GPS rescue mode and everything works. All right, so we're at the field and we're about to go ahead and go, no, we don't go too far, but we're gonna go ahead and use the GPS unit and we're gonna go ahead and enable GPS rescue on the switch. So like I said before, it's really, really good to use if say somebody powers up on the same channel as you, you can go to flick the switch and your quad will be safe and it'll start returning back to home to you. Uh, same thing if you do fail safe, you lose reception, whatever, and uh, you don't have to worry about losing your quad and looking for it the rest of the day. Um, like the same thing before, we set up the, the coordinates so we can go ahead and track or and log our flights if we need to, uh, just in case we do have like the battery disconnects or something 
really bad happens. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and go to the end of the field. Now I have to make sure that it is on the default setting in Betaflight is it has to be 200 meters away from you in order to even be able to use it. So right here in a moment, I'm going to go ahead and flick the switch right there. And you see it jerked around real fast. And now it's climbing to its predetermined uh, altitude. And now it's starting to uh, come back to home. Uh, you can see the arrow down the bottom left. It's pointing towards the home location. And as soon as you arm the quad um, and it starts gathering satellites, it actually notices the, you know, it pretty much locks where the home is. So keep that in mind when, you know, you have your quad out. So right now I just went ahead and I took back control of it. So now I have it. And now I can go ahead and land it and do whatever else I'd want with it you know, or, you know, land it or continue flying like I just did there. Uh, everything is good to go. Um, a couple things about the OSD real quick before I let you guys go. As you see, I have satellites. It says one. I actually, the OSD actually has to be moved over just a tad bit. Um, it actually has 12 satellites. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much GPS rescue mode and what GPS can do for you. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, give this video a like, and uh, if you have any questions or any comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. But I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.